This is our first official engagement with um, with the Capella uh, com community community since we released our um, adapter for Maple MBSC. So we're pretty excited to be able to uh, present um, some of the work that we've done in, in that. Uh, uh, Barani Mohan, uh, he's our um, uh, our product manager um, for Maple MBSC. Uh, I've just realised I should have updated my my slide. He has recently been promoted to product management manager and he will be uh, doing most of the uh, sort of the heavy lifting in terms of uh, uh, de demonstrating the tool uh, with with, uh, with several use cases um i'm going to just start by just setting the scene in, uh, in terms of uh, what has motivated us to develop um uh, maybe uh, maple mbsc um and uh, uh, and and you know give some sense of you know what's driving the uh, um, the customers to us and uh, and 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 starting to, to drive the use of uh, Maple MBSC. Most of what I'm going to be talking about is from our experience with um, with other um, MBSC platforms. As I mentioned, uh, our, um, our support for Capella is very new, but um, you know I'm going to try and keep this very uh, very generic in terms of our discussion. Um, and um, and then we can sort of get get into some de detailed uh, questions uh, afterwards. Uh, so with that, let me let let me start. And really, you know, I think the the biggest um, motivator for, uh, for us was that you know we have been involved in um, several fairly large scale uh, projects uh, where systems engineering has been um, um, attempted has been has been, been an attempt to uh, to um, to incorporate. Uh, the, the the MBSC uh, aspects with the the MBE or the uh, basically the the analysis and simulation um, uh, of, of our customers, and you know and and, and there are very many challenges there, and it's kind of, and it's interesting to see that there have been several studies that have sort of you know really sort of um, uh, pointed out or reinforce our uh, sort of anecdotal view of what's going on um, uh, within uh, the, these industries. And fundamentally, what it comes down to is that it really doesn't matter how good your tools are, if you don't have the, uh, the, uh, the processes in place, and most importantly, you don't have everybody um, uh, engaged and committed to that process, things will go badly wrong. And this is uh, certainly supported from um, uh, various studies. This is particular slide is from a um, study carried out by Sim Data. It has a very US focus. Uh, but even in in Europe, um, we have seen um, studies that are very much similar to that. And uh, uh, this is a couple of years old now. But you know what we're seeing is that um, fundamentally the main challenge is, is how do we um, engage people with the process and make sure that process is is successful? Because no matter how good the t the tools are, they will never um, it will never be adopted if we don't have the, those processes in place. So, more specifically, you know, our sort of ob observations in, in, the, in the, um, the projects that we've been involved in is that we have the systems engineer who is very much focused on the, 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 on, the on the system definition or the uh, or the architecture uh, of that, and you know, you know they're, they're striving to create um, a single source of truth in terms of the uh, the information or an authoritative source of truth in terms of the architectural information that's going to be used by all the other stakeholders. In the in the project, and, and very often they will use that uh, that systems model uh, to um, uh, acquire information. Um, certainly, uh, things like parameters, constraints, structures, and so forth. And that information will be used uh, by uh, these stakeholders who are not systems engineers. They just want to get their job done, um, and uh, using other tools in order to uh, uh, generate information that can be then used to um uh, to, to to fill out the uh, or, or uh, the systems model effectively the more as more and more activities are going on in, in the process um more more of that detailed information needs to go into the systems model in, in order to keep it up to date and uh, um uh, and mature now that process tends to be you know very much an ad hoc process it can be an email it could be spreadsheets could be presentation, uh, many, many different documents that are uh, brought to the systems engineer who then needs to interpret that information and then uh, to in order to put that into the, the systems model. And this is where we're seeing the uh, the, the friction. Um, this is a highly uh, uh, human um, endeavor. 
Um, there's many inter misinterpretations, miscommunications, um, errors start to creep in, uh, which then forces more design reviews. And of course, there's a lot of uh, that, uh, churn that can uh, uh, not only cause delays and increased costs in the process, but it shakes the confidence uh, between all the various stakeholders in the actual process. So uh, our proposition is, well, uh, in order to uh, um, smooth out that friction and keep um, all the stakeholders engaged, why not give them direct access to the systems model so that they can um, take information in a view that can uh, that is specific to the work that they're doing, and then any information that is required to go back into the systems model from the work that they're doing can be fed directly into, into the systems model. But don't force them to use systems engineering tools like Capella, but just give them a standard office tool, Excel. Everybody knows and understands Excel. Very often, most of the tasks that uh, are required can be expressed in a um, in a tabular view. But uh, uh, but fundamentally, it's just something that's a lot more intuitive for uh, for uh, non systems engineers to be able to use. So that's really what Maple MBSC. That's what drove us to develop Maple MBSC. Uh, now, all the information that's uh, residing in the systems model is, is residing in a consistent manner. It's, it's residing in the way that the stakeholders intended it to be um, um, uh, structured. And now all that information can be then used as a basis for design, design review meetings. Um, so, uh, so then the, the, the systems architect, architect can then um, make the final decision, okay, yeah, the, 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 these changes are valid. And then they get that gets submitted to the uh, to the main systems model. Now all that information can be used by all stakeholders uh, in order to to collaborate um, in, in 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 their tasks. And we'll see some examples of uh, the, the, these in uh, when in, in Brownie's presentation. So in a little more detail, well, what what is Maple MVSC? Well, it's a it's a um, an Excel front end that has a layer that provides um, the ability to um, customize um, a view of uh, the systems model in an appropriate way for the, for the task that's being, uh, being carried out. It also provides a, a layer between the, um, the, the Excel front end and the, uh, the systems model. So um, we are taking uh, information from the Capella model um, that's you know, has a specific structure and then recasting that and transforming that into a, um, into a view um, in, in Excel. Um, conversely, any changes that are made in Excel, and that includes additional elements, um, um, not just changes to, to uh, values in the elements, but additional elements, additional interdependencies, all those, that information can then be sent back as, a, uh, as an update into the, into the model structure. Um, and uh, we, you know, and as I mentioned, we we do use um, um, Maple MBSC is being used a lot in um, with other platforms such as Rhapsody and uh, uh, Magic Draw, Cameo, uh, Team or Cloud. And then uh, with the, the last release of um, Maple MBSC, we um, we released the uh, uh, the Capella adapter, so now we can support uh, um, Capella uh, uh, natively. So, um, just in terms of mapping the, um, the the kinds of tasks, the typical tasks that uh, um, you know we uh, we anticipate Capella users are going to be using Maple uh, MBSE, it's, it's really the kinds of tasks that would typically be carried out in a, in a spreadsheet, but now they're tightly integrated with the systems model. So things like uh, functional decomposition. So you you know you need to get the SMEs. Uh, to um, uh, to decompose a high level um, function description into something that is actionable and and, and verifiable. Um, now the SMEs can just do that directly in uh, in, in 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 Excel while still pre preserving the uh, the hierarchical structure of the systems model. Uh, component in interfaces, safety analysis. We'll be taking a look at that um, uh, with, before and. So you know these are all various um, uh, tasks that require information to be. Well, first, it requires information to be viewed, 
but then information information to be then pushed back into the system all the way through the uh, Arcadia work workflow. But we can also use Maple and BSE in order to do things like an analyzing the actual structure of the model. You know, we can take a look at what, where all the dependencies are. We can um, uh, review the traceability of all the uh, the, the, the different elements and uh, and um, you know things like design structure matrices and so forth. So it's a very useful tool for being able to do the, just uh, for just for, for systems guys to be able to get a tabular view. Um, of the of the system model and all the interdependencies. So with that, I think it's time to. Uh, uh, actually, I do have one more um, uh, bullet, and, and really, this is just to summarize uh, su summarizing just what I meant, uh, what I said before. Uh, you know, the typical tasks, the the ideal use cases for if, when you're looking at uh, Maple MBSE, are things that require large large quantities of information to be integrated with the systems um, model. Biggest probably the number one task that we're using uh, Maple MBSC for currently is integrating equipment lists, master equipment lists into the into the systems models. Uh, tasks that require specialist skills. So this is you know what, um, being able to get to, um, uh, the information that is within the the realm of the subject matter expert into the systems model. Um, there are many tasks around the uh, uh, the, pro the process. I'm sure that are using spreadsheets. Uh, those are islands of information. We can use uh, Maple MBSE as a way of uh, care, um, maintaining um, the traceability and uh, centralizing the information that's in those uh, in those spreadsheets. Spreadsheets. And um, as I mentioned, tasks that require analysis of the, the systems model, things like impact analysis and DC, DSMs, traceability, and so forth. So before we get into the, the, the Brownies uh, section, um, let's just talk about um, uh, the actual architecture. Um, as you can probably imagine, implementing uh, Maple MBSC um, does require um, a certain amount of effort. Um, it requires uh, knowledge from a systems expert in order to be able to create the various configurations and views um, and Excel templates that are going to be used by the end user. <coughs> um, <coughs> So, they, um, so the systems uh, expert or the, you know, is the person who is knowledgeable on things like transformation uh, languages, on the internal structures of the uh, of the models, and that person then and that that those uh, templates are then sent to the to the end user. They use that to use the interface. Maple MBSC is, is is structured on top of the the EMF um, um, <clears throat> interface, uh, which allows us to relatively easily uh, create uh, different interfaces for, for, for different uh, um, uh, structures, uh, platforms that, that comply with the EMF um, um, standards. So um, as I mentioned, uh, Teamwork Cloud and Rhapsody, this is, we use different adapters for doing that. And, and, and now we're using for Capella. And of course, we're looking around for at other um, interfaces in order to, uh, to create those. Okay, so with that, let me pass this over to Barani. I'll take you through a live demonstration. Okay, so uh, today I'm, I'm going to take you through two use cases. One is the uh, import of master equipment list. Like Paul mentioned, this is one of the use case uh, where Maple MBC can easily handle existing uh, component list, uh, which, which has some certain attributes to be imported into a system model, make changes to it, and have it in a centralized place. The second work, uh, workflow is I'm going to also take you through a safety analysis, performing a failure mode and effect analysis for the components that we are going to import. So what is a MEL list? Uh, MEL is master equipment list. Uh, it, it's nothing but a list of parts in a system or, or list of components based on which you are going to decompose your, your main uh, system of interest. And they all share certain common attributes like mass, uh, the quantity, Part number, uh, what what are what is the power, what is the nominal power, etc. So uh, for this workflow, what what I have taken is a table from uh, the lunar relay satellite communication system. So I'm I'm importing a, a different components of the communication system. So uh, this is a report that uh, you will be able to find publicly. It's it's from NASA for the uh, LRS satellite. 
this workflow might be a bit uh, different from the traditional Arcadia methodology where you uh, follow the top-down approach. Uh, for example, say you, you already have a legacy system with, with all the relevant information in, in either existing as documents or, or spreadsheets that you're looking to move from a document-centric to uh, model-centric using Kepler. And you want this information uh, to be brought into the system model, make, make some changes which is much relevant to the a system you are going to develop in Kepler, uh, these changes could be done within Maple Embassy and, and saved to the model. Or if you're, for example, say you're following a bottom-up approach uh, in, in which you are going to bring in all your uh, legacy uh, information from your system and uh, to identify gaps, this, this is also another, another workflow uh, where you could import the component list, uh, define a certain hierarchy for those components and see those as Kepler elements. So uh, in order for me to do this import, what, what I did is uh, I have used the PBMT profile, uh, like the add-on to uh, create a domain in which I have added certain properties, and I have restricted the scope of this properties to be added only to my physical components. And uh, as you can see, the, these are the list of uh, different properties that I, I'm going to uh, add to my each physical component. And I'm going to import it into Maple MBC, save these ones to Kepler. Uh, once I do this, we, we can see in Kepler the list of all the components that we imported, uh, the hierarchy that I'm, I'm going to define in, in Excel, and also the different property values that, that are listed in the import sheet. So one, once I'm done with that, uh, the next workflow that I'm also going to show you is the uh, identifying the failure modes for the components that we just now imported from MEL. So another way or, or a different workflow where you, you could see this happening with, within your organization is uh, the system engineer. He, he, he has already created the system architecture going from the uh, operational level is now at the physical level. And he wants sa uh, safety analysis to be done on, on a part of the model, like the whole system or, or a subsystem. And he wants to now involve uh, the safety engineering team. Uh, in, say uh, the typical workflow will be uh, asking the safety engineering team to also uh, understand Kepala, uh, find where in the model they could find the different components on which they want to do the failure analysis, et cetera. So instead, instead of it, uh, so the problem there is some are okay with learning new things and, and they are uh, okay with understanding their methodology, et cetera. But there, there has been some resistance that because this is not their typical job to uh, learn a new modeling tool, uh, understand the methodology, identify different components, et cetera. Because they, their sole job is to perform safety engineering analysis on uh, different projects. So they, they are not someone who is limited to a certain project in, in which they are going to go from start to end of the project. So for, for them, uh, what, what's the best solution is you can give an Excel, which is interacting with the Kepala model on, on the back end, and they can perform their uh, failure mode analysis traditionally on, on the Excel spreadsheet without understanding what, what the physical component is, uh, what, what is the property value, how, what, where they need to add this information. So uh, as a safety engineer, he's only going to interact with the table, add the relevant information, save it to the model. Now, uh, a system engineer can review it together with, with the team or with the safety engineer uh, based on the input that has been added to the Kepler model. So for the uh, failure mode uh, and effect analysis, uh, the workflow that I'm going to follow is we are going to get the physical components from the Kepler model, and then uh, I'm going to identify the failure modes. So I'm not going to go into detail of uh, identifying failure modes for many components, say just one to give you an idea of what the workflow is look, look, going to look like. And even for this, I, I've used the PVMT add-on to extend uh, the domain so I could add the relevant information for the uh, safety analysis. And then uh, I'm, th th this is the same information or this, you're going to see this information as tables in, in Maple MBC. And for, for this failure modes, we are going to identify the severity, uh, which is the S, occurrence, and, and the detector. Uh, and the product of these three, I'm, I'm going to cal calculate the uh, RPN, which is the risk priority number. And once we do this in, in Excel, 
I'm going to save it back to the model. Once I update the Kepler model, you'll be able to see the new uh, safety analysis performed on, on some of the components. And this is an iterative process because uh, I, I have say I, I have identified certain failures. Now, based on this failures and, and the mitigating actions, I'm going to update my model uh, for me to reduce the sa safety or reduce the risk priority number. And then the question that we are going to ask ourselves is, is my system safety enough or if, if it's within the safety regulation rules? If yes, we, we move outside of the safety analysis part. If not, we, we are going to again redo the same process. So here uh, in, in Excel, I, I have the list of components that I, I'm going to import into Maple MBSC. So here you can see the list of components of uh, the communication systems of the uh, lunar relay satellite. And each of these uh, components, they, they have certain properties, with, which is quantity, uh, the unit mass, the CBE mass is the current best estimate mass. Uh, the what, what is the approximate growth percentage that we are going to uh, predict and uh, calculate that growth percentage? Uh, the total mass is nothing but the sum of the growth and, and the current best estimate mass. And then uh, we also have the nominal power and peak power. So we are just going to import this information, not not do much. But uh, once we import these components, I'm, I'm just going to define the different hierarchy for the top level communication system. So it is just a flat list of different components that I'm going to import into Maple MBC. So here, uh, th this is a typical Maple MBC configuration uh, file. Once I uh, click on, double click on it, what Maple MBC will do is uh, it, it will it will launch Maple MBC, uh, bring in the predefined template that I have defined. Uh, for Maple MBC, and once this, this is loaded and it, it validates the uh, configuration file, it's going to ask me to select the Kepler model. So for this, I'm going to select uh, the model that I've created for the communication systems. Uh, I, I'm selecting the Melody Modeler file for Kepler directly. Once uh, I, I do this, Maple MBC is going to access the information for this. Uh, if, if there is some information already available, I'm going to see it. But since uh, this is a new project that I created for the demo, you, you can see that I don't have any components for uh, the communication subsystem. So that is why I have, I'm not seeing any information here. And also, you can see that uh, with, with Maple MBC, I can limit the scope of what uh, part of the model that I want to expose to the user. I'm not exposing the logical uh, architecture of the system analysis or the operational layer. I'm just exposing to the user uh, the physical architecture and whatever information is going to go in, into this communication system and that's all. So here uh, it's empty, like, like I mentioned, there is no information in the model and I'm going to import the Excel file that we just saw. So once I import, uh, Maple MBC is also going to notify me that how many records has been added or if uh, there has been information already existing, it will just update based on the information in the Excel sheet. Now you can you can see I'm I'm back to uh, Maple MBC. You can see the different components that I imported from the Excel sheet. So I, I have the component, uh, the quantities, the unit mass, the current best estimate mass, and and all the values for the components. Now. Say, uh, for example, uh, since it, it's in Excel, you can use Excel formulas to calculate these different values. Say, uh, example, say I, I'm going to change the number of uh, KADT transponder from quantity two to quantity And this is nothing but my product of my quantity into, so here. And if I change, say this to three, you can see the estimate mass is also changed. And if uh, the growth percentage is three, for example, I, I again want to calculate now based on the latest result, it's going to be this into my product of six by 100. So you can see I have calculated again uh, the growth. So my total mass is also going to increase. It's going to be the sum of uh, the growth plus the current best estimate. 
So here, uh, since it's in Excel, you can use the Excel formula, manipulate the information uh, that, that we imported from the Excel sheet. So now they are just a flat list of components. What I want to do now is I want to create an hierarchy from, from my top level system, uh, which is the communications and then another layer and, and a third level hierarchy. So to do that, I, I have the component assembly table. So here I'm, I'm just seeing the flat list of, of the components. I, I'm not uh, displaying the properties of the components like uh, the one that we saw in the previous sheet. It's just the components. And uh, say to the communication systems, I'm, I'm going to assign certain subcomponents. So I, I have done this so many times to know uh, what are the components that's, that's, that's going to be the subcomponents. So which, which would be the same uh, with, with uh, subject matter experts. So I know the K band DT links, the relay links, and uh, the K band ranging, and then my S band relay link, uh, the data router, and the antenna. So I know these these are the different uh, components that, that that are going to be the subcomponents for my communications. So I'm just adding it here. And I'm going to drag my communication. So what I just did now is I have assigned the K band DT link and, and the relay link, et cetera, as a subcomponent for my communication system. So the, you, here you are seeing kind of like a redundant information because I'm, I'm forcing the user uh, to enter a name for the subcomponent itself. So this, this directly is the subcomponents. But for example, say I want to reuse certain component, like uh, say a gym ball. It, it's a component that could be shared between different subsystems. So in that case, to do uh, something like a differentiation between the part names, I, I can just change the subcomponent name like, like this. So it's just a way of for me to identify that it, the component subcomponent or, or the part that I'm assigning to communication it is different when, when I do it with a different subsystem, that's all. Uh, now, I, I say I want, I have added one level of hierarchy between communications and all, all my other subcomponents. And I also know that the, the rest of the components will also be split between this second level of hierarchy. So I'm going to just copy the uh, K band DTE link. And I know that from this, uh, everything up to the K band waveguide, it's going to be added as a component. So I'm doing the same uh, same thing that I did for the communication. Here I'm, I'm just maintaining the same name, but th this is not something that, that has to be done. I could have different uh, subcomponent names. Once I'm done with the uh, DTE link, I want to add something for the relay link too. So for, for a subject matter expert, th this is not going to be something like a copy paste as I'm doing uh, because he, he, he knows what components should be a subcomponent and, and so on. So here for relay link, I'm adding certain components again. So uh, just using the Excel's copy paste. Relay link to, and let me also add the one for uh, S band relay link. Okay, and say finally, I just want to add some subcomponents for the antenna boom. And uh, everything that's listed below the antenna is going to be the subcomponents. Push here. And finally, the only other thing is for my S band relay.
Okay, so I'm, I'm done with uh, creating the hierarchy between communications, the, their subcomponents, etc. So to save it, I, I'm just going to click on the save button and make name BC. And if I go back to Kepala, uh, uh, my Kepala model and refresh the model, you'll be able to see the list of all the new components that we added to the L, uh, communication subsystem. So here you, you can see the different subcomponents that we added for the uh, LRS communication system, uh, like the communications, K band. So for each of it, you can also see that uh, the properties that we created, like for the current best estimate, uh, the growth percentage, etc. So since we imported all, all this information is going to be also consistent and every, everything is captured now uh, in, into the centralized model. And same way, if, if, as a system engineer, say I make some changes here in the model, and and if I save it back, I reload it to uh, to get the latest information again in, in Kepala. Say for example, uh, here in, instead of 20 watt, I, I'm say I'm going to change this to 40 watt for the uh, the KA TWTA component. I click finish, and I save this to to my uh, to my file. Here I'm going to go into add-ins and reload. It's going to give me the latest information that we added for the K TWT. So here you can see that it's been now updated from the 20 watt to 40 watts. So but by this you can always uh, give, give the subject matter experts the most recent information with, with the latest changes in the model. And to show you just, just the uh, what are the different uh, domains that I just extended for it, you, you can see for the properties I have added it all as a float property, and and the different values here. So uh, one other thing that that uh, we could, we could visualize this as models is here you can see that all, all my changes uh, or, or whatever components I have added. You can see for the LRS communication, they, 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 it shows all the component or, or the component decomposition. So my top level, which is the communications. Uh, then I, I have the list of the KA bands uh, for different versions, and then the data router, S band, etc. And for each of it, you, you can see the subcomponents are, are also added. And you know, by clicking on this, you, you, you will get the view for. Uh, the properties in which you can also see the different values they are assigned to in, in Kepala. So now to go move on to the uh, second part of, of the workflow in which I'm going to display again the same components. So here you can see that uh, this is the uh, FMEA table that I have created. There, there is no information here because we have not identified any failures for the physical components. So as a user, I, I here th this information or the or the list of components that that's shown here is consistent with the changes or what components is being listed in in uh, or the ones that has been imported into Kepala model. Say for uh, here, I, I want to identify failure for a KA band. Uh, uh, say, for example, the KA band uh, DTE transponder. So, for this physical component, uh, I want to create a failure. And the failure is uh, ADT. Something like uh, the transponder failure. Here, uh, you can see the different SOD and Say to give give also a description of what what the failure is, uh, something like uh, so. This is be, this happens because uh, there is total loss of information uh, that that's re reaching the ground ground control. So that there is no communication that that's happening between my uh, ground control unit and, and my satellite. So that's one failure. This is a very severe failure. So 
Uh, I'm going giving it on, on a scale of one to 10. Uh, 10 is the highest level uh, for the failure. And I'm, I'm, since this is very severe, I'm, I'm going to give uh, the severity number as nine. Uh, the cause for this would be, example, say it, it's because of an electrical fault. And uh, how frequent this occurs, this, this is not something that, that will occur frequently in, in the satellite. So I'm going to give it an occurrence of, of five. And how, how, how could I detect this failure is inf lost of information to the ground control or information is not received by the uh, ground control unit. And uh, to detect this, it, it's not very easy to detect it uh, before this failure happens. Uh, this is something that can be detected only when failure up, a failure occurs. So it, the detection is hard, so I'm giving it again a high, high detecting number. So risk priority number is nothing but the product of all, all the three uh, severity, uh, occurrence, and detect, uh, direction. So I'm going to use Excel formula to multiply these three units. So here, th this is my RPN number that, that I've added. And uh, say as a way of uh, recommended action, I I'm just going to add in something like a backup unit. Okay, so I created a very, very simple failure mode uh, analysis for, for the KADT transponder, identify the failure cause detection. Uh, after identifying the detection, I also calculated the RPN. Uh, the recommended action, it, it could be some, some way of mitigating the failure, or this could be added also as kind of like comments that, that goes into the model, which, which is reviewed further. So again, uh, for me to see these changes back in Kepler model, I'm, I'm going to click on save. Once it is saved, I go back to Kepala. I uh, refresh my model here. Here, uh, once my refresh is done, if I go and uh, click on the component, I'm going to see the failure mode that we just added. It goes for the K band DT transponder. Here you can see the FMEA, uh, the extension has been done for this. Uh, transponder, uh, the failure that we added, the severity, occurrence direction, the risk priority number, and also uh, the recommended action. So as you can see, like to, to an user who is not familiar with the modeling tool, uh, the uh, Arcadia methodology or, or the modeling language, just by giving them a very simple Excel interface and also exposing just the certain views or, or the certain part of the model that is of interest to that specific uh, subject matter expert. So they, they can easily work on, on the tables view, uh, add in their uh, information, save it back to the model. And every time there is a change in the model, they're always uh, they they're always provided with the most recent information, as you can see. So uh, that, that's all the workflow I, I wanted to show you today. I'm going to give it back to Paul. Uh, he has a few more slides where he's going to explain you the uh, uh, like the, the different use cases and, and our papers. Okay, let me uh, share my screen. Ah, I need to be made presenter. Oh, you need you need to stop sharing, I think. So I, I, uh, I just wanted to quickly wrap up and uh, just talk about, uh, I probably really don't have time to talk about one uh, particular use case. Uh, <clears throat> um, just to give you some sense of the, uh, um, you know, what the, um, 
the, the likely sort of return on investment in terms of um, you know, just improves improvements in in um, in productivity and also accuracy in terms of in, uh, entering the information. Uh, so this is based on a, a, a study that was done at, at Nissan, um, where they um, um, started to use Maple MBSE as part of their uh, uh, their processes, their, um, their systems engineering process. And uh, um, you can find more information. Uh, there is actually a, um, a paper that this is based on. But fundamentally, um, what the team wanted to do was to give the same tasks to uh, uh, to a group of people using Excel with Maple MBSC, um, and same task to uh, somebody using um, a, a standard um, uh, MBSC tool, uh, not Capella, um, but uh, another um, MBSC tool. Um, and uh, really just to then just, just to study the, the um, uh, the improvements in, uh, in in entering information, uh, they had sort of four different uh, um, use cases that were looking at context diagram, use case diagram, trade off matrix, and just entering in guide words. But uh, uh, fundamentally, what it came down to is that um, you know the, getting that information into uh, into the systems model was significantly faster, um, you know, about, about about a quarter of the time. Um, uh, and trying to get it in using a, a, a standard um, MBSE tool, uh, <clears throat> and uh, on, overall, uh, you know, we were looking at about half the time uh, to to get uh, all the various tech, um, uh, the various uh, tasks into into the, the the systems model. So really, you know, we were looking at you know a speed up, if you like, just in terms of getting the uh, getting information. And you know, there's a doubling of uh, of that, but more importantly, you know, or just as important, um, the actual accuracy of um, uh, of the information. Um, so the number of errors that uh, crept into the system model was reduced uh, by about seventy five percent. And in fact, if we look at uh, took a closer look at what those um, um, errors were. Uh, Really, they, they they were very much simple mistakes, spelling mistakes, and 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 um, and so forth, um, and not structural mistakes, which are the kinds of errors that would be creeping into the um, uh, using using the other tool. And part of that is because um, the uh, uh, you know a lot of that structural information is actually handled in the background by Maple MBSE. All the end user has to do is to um, put that information in, and you know the the, the fundamentally the um, uh, the, the the study came to the conclusion that by using a familiar intuitive use Excel user interface, um, and uh, these are optimized to do very specific tasks. So the, the views, as you saw with Barani's examples, can be created just to, uh, to, 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 to uh, scoped just to do that specific task, and really did not need a, a deep knowledge um, of, the, of the, the modeling language. In this case, this ML. So, really, just to wrap up, I mean, um, you know, what what we're able to offer with uh, Maple MBSE is a fully customizable um, tool that um, that uh, can create those views that are specific to the uh, to, to the task in hand by all the other uh, stakeholders in the pro in the project. They can get a up and running very very quickly um you know, you know the uh, once you've explained if there's you know there are a few structural things within the um the interface that need to be explained once that's that's uh, provided then actually uh, people get up and productive very quickly but fundamentally this was reducing uh, errors and costs and and risk to the to the project by uh, by using this tool and, and overall I mean, I think one of the most important things, and this goes back to my uh, my, my original slide. Um, um, you know, this really does help to engage or get broaden engagement with the systems engineering process in a, in a meaningful and uh, friction-free way, um, and to ensure uh, success and buy-in by everybody in the uh, uh, in the process. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention. I think we have a little bit of time for, for questions. Um, 
Indeed. So thanks, Dr. Van, for your presentation and for sharing some of your insights with us. And yes, it's time for questions. Um, so first question is, uh, is uh, why is the hierarchy of components, subcomponents, not imported from Capella rather than creating it in Excel? Okay, uh, I, I can answer this. So with, with Capella, yes, you can definitely import the components in Capella, but uh, say when this is something that's expected from a subject matter expert who is not familiar working with Capella and, and the modeling tool. So that, that's when this is a workflow it's useful for them. Okay, thanks. Uh, next one is quite interesting in my in my opinion. Um, is uh, your uh, your tool compatible with uh, multi users? I mean, is it compatible with Team for Capella? Sure. Do you want to answer that, Barani? Yeah, sure. So our, our current integration is directly to Capella. Yeah. We are looking into supporting Team for Capella also. So th this is something that uh, will be added to Maple MBC in the future. So it, it's not with our current release, but we are looking to support Team for Capella. So the, the way we'd, we'd imagine, you know, the use case would be that you do have individ individuals who are doing this this work on an individual license of uh, uh, of Capella, um, and then use Capella to do the submission to to, to to Team or the extraction from Team to a to a local installation. Um, as we start to see uh, use of um, uh, the, you know the Maple MBSC, we, we do definitely want to be be able to support Team uh, for Capella. Thanks. Um, do you have an, a Capella model and possible Maple MBC spreadsheets available as an example? Okay, so I, I will answer this question too. We do not have uh, something that's downloadable and viewable, but uh, you will be able to get free evaluation to uh, work with Maple MBC and, and integrated with your model and you'll be able to check it by yourself definitely we, we are there to help you on that process too but it, it's not something that's readily available to be downloaded from but if, if you're interested please contact us we, we can set you up with an evaluation and uh, share our examples that that's already there okay and what prevents someone from accidentally modifying the Excel template or under an invalid value? Uh, so it, it's partially handled by the user who's creating the configuration file. So li like you uh, saw previously for, for the failure modes, uh, I, I determine to which part of the model the information has to, uh, is being entered by the user. It is possible to add some invalid values, uh, but uh, th this again goes into the way of reviewing it uh, with, with the user and, and also the system engineer, which is going to be the same case when, when you're going to work with uh, two, two different Kepala installation and how you're handling the users. So it, it is possible for the user to add something that's invalid, but uh, it can be partially restricted by the configuration file because this seems to be a very general question. Uh, say if, if, if the information he's trying to enter is something that's invalid and not followed by Kepala, he, he, he will not be able to do it. He will get an error in the front end. But for example, uh, say you, you are expecting a, a string value, a numerical value is entered. So these are the small things that could happen, but still could be restricted by the configuration file. Um, okay. Um, does Mapper MBC detect? if a change has happened on both Excel and Capella side? Uh, so if a change has happened on the Capella side, we, we cannot detect it uh, immediately. So this is can be done only when you reload. When you reload, it, it's going to bring in the latest information. And this is the case one, only for the current release because uh, when we move to Team for Capella, using the logs and other features, we'll be able to uh, immediately update the users that there has been change to the model. Or uh, if he's trying to change something that has been logged by a certain user, they, they'll get an error saying they, they cannot modify this element. So this is something that will be handled when we move to uh, Team for Capella. 
I think for the time being, just going back to what I the, the you know the workflow I just described, you know, for for those kinds of um, uh, conflicts, we, we need to have a combination of Capella to be able to detect those. So we won't be able to do it natively until we we support team. Okay, and. Uh, which types of entities can be exported and imported? Uh, so I, I don't think there is a restriction on the kind of uh, model elements that you want to interact between uh, Kepala and, and within Maple MVSC. So we, we support all, all the Kepala elements. Okay, and in the same way, uh, um, um, can you import or export relations between entities? Uh, so it, it depends on the entities. Uh, it's definitely possible, but uh, th there are. I, I was testing certain cases in which it's certainly possible, but uh, I cannot generalize that to all Kepala elements. So it, it's going to be something like a test, or if it's something that has been extended with the PVMT profile, it will be case specific. But in, in general, I, I don't see it to be a problem. Okay, next one is a bit technical. Uh, do you connect with Capella from Excel with some API, or do you manipulate Capella project file directly with uh, Visual Basic code? So Maple MVC, it's not an export or import of, of, of uh, the Capella model. So what we do is it, it itself is based on EMF. And uh, because of that, what we do is we uh, that connects and in interacts through the Kepler model, same way as how Kepler will interact. So consider Maple MVC as like a modeling tool that that uh, has an user interface as Excel. So Excel is not Maple MVC. Maple MVC's user interface or, or its front end is Excel, but by itself, it, it's a tool that that can handle models. Uh, the, uh, from from the Kepala model, like con convert those models as tables, and when you're interacting, you, you're actually interacting with the model. But from a view, that, that's a table. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we have a, a quite provocative last question, but you, you pass the answer. Uh, in simple terms, is this just an Excel export import tool? Or is there any other magic behind the scene? Yeah, yeah I think I think it's, it, it, the, it's the same answer. It, it's not an important export tool uh, because, as you saw, the, when I added components in one worksheet, they, they were reflected in another worksheet. Uh, if you change the relation, it's going to be notified to all the model elements, which is going to be consistent on how you are going to edit it in edit it directly in Kepala itself. So, if you delete an element in Kepala, everything that uh, the element owns, like say, if you are deleting a physical component, there are some physical com uh, subcomponents for that. You are also having certain relation for the physical component. When you delete it, all these informations are deleted. Uh, you can expect the same behavior to happen in Maple MVC. When you delete a top-level element, you are going to recursively delete all the sub-level elements, and also it's, it's different relations. So it's not an import or export tool. Uh, it, it itself is a modeling tool which interacts with the model, simplifies the model, and will display the table. Uh, and also to extend on uh, the previous question about, about uh, if we are manipulating the project with some VBA code, we are using VBA code, but it, not to manipulate the uh, user experience, but just to notify us on where the changes has where the change has uh, happened on the Excel sheet. But on the back end, it, it itself is a tool that does all the uh, notifications, all the transformation from model to, to the tables and from the table to the model. OK, thanks. And probably the last questions before uh, before we conclude. And and uh, thanks to, 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 to give me the, the presenter right so that I'm preparing the, the, the conclusion while you're, you're responding. Uh, Okay, so what version of Excel do is supported by by Maple MBSC? So we we officially support from August 2010 to 2019. Uh, we also support uh, Office 365, uh, but uh, the 2010 support will be dropped in, in few months because uh, Microsoft Office is also dropping 2010 support, so we will no longer support it in few months. But currently, our support is from 2010 
uh, irrespective of 32 bit or 64 bit till uh, 2019 and also office 365 okay and is it compatible uh, with with mac no uh, for now we are just uh, windows os <laughs> okay 